Um, well, I think the fans are excited to see the land and Nynaeve uh, storyline, and I am always too. I'm a fan of it in the books, but I, I'm, it's interesting to see how they're implementing it into our show. Um, I think it was probably sooner than the books, but that's, you know, we have to do that sometimes because we're never guaranteed how many, how long we're going to be able to go. So um, I'm always looking forward to, uh, as much as I love working with, with Moraine, but uh, exploring things with Zoe it is always very satisfying. And I just finished some really great stuff with her about two weeks ago that I think that the fans are going to really love. And um, yeah, some really great relationship stuff. I think the arc of the characters we can, you know, say is, you know, as you read the books, you know, the they're all growing up and they're all becoming adults and they're all going off into their separate journeys that, um, you know, that doesn't stop, you know, from where we leave off. And so I think that the arc of all the characters is um, incredibly challenging and um, I guess it's something to look forward to. Um, Rand, I mean, in season two, Rand is, you know, front and central as much as Moraine is, um, and that doesn't stop. I think I wanted to do the Wheel of Time to escape reality in, on some level. I think I'd, I'd tethered myself to um, playing real life characters for in, in the past few years um, prior to doing this. I'd, I'd played Marie Curie, I'd played a war correspondent called Marie Colvin and I think the idea of escaping and playing somebody who was magically connected to the source of you know what powers the universe was incredibly interesting to me. Um, but ultimately Yes, you've got all of those things, but it's still people talking, you know, it's still people with connection to other people, you know, whether or not they have magical powers and are united by bonds that we don't have in our real life. I'm speaking about the bond between Moraine and her warder, which is, you know, sealed with the one power and allows them to communicate wordlessly and understand exactly what the other one is feeling. Yes, we don't have that in our life, but it's still about loyalty, communication, love, but of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, you know, one step removed from our world, but yet, you know, linked to it. So I think, you know, all the human defects, <laughs> if you have it, still come to play in fantasy, you know, pride, lust, um, greed, <laughs> fear, um, jealousy, all of those things that make us human, they, they all play out in this world too. So, um, it's not so far removed in the end. Acting in the fantasy genre is honestly a dream. I mean, you know, the possibilities are limitless and, you know, the stakes are always high. So really as an actor, you are able to express so much. Um, even the stunts, uh, some of the, you know, physical activities of channeling or horse riding, which has been one of the highlights of this job is being able to learn how to horse ride. All of those things um, are possible. And I've been a massive fan of fantasy my entire life. So to be a part of uh, a series like this one is an absolute dream come true. I enjoy acting in, in the fantasy genre. I've done it quite a bit, actually. I think um, what's mostly required for an actor to, to to delve into a world like this is just a, a big imagination and it helps when we have um, really great writing and um, you know the attention to detail on the on the, on the sets and and the incredible crew that we have just only only helps and adds to the the magic of bringing something like this to life. So um, my audition, I actually. I got the part off, off one tape, which was kind of an absolute whirlwind experience because I had four different scenes to film um, and I taped them with a friend with very little knowledge of, of what I was taping for. Everything was code worded and um, I didn't even know what the show was. I didn't know the names of the characters. Um, so it was it was a very difficult script to learn because you were very aware that these weren't the words that were, were there. So they were quite hard to kind of find. So I really thought I'd done a really terrible job <laughs> at the audition. Um, but. Um, 
the, a couple of days later, I got a phone call to say um, that Rafe would like to meet me. Um, and it was a really, really quick process from there. And it was, it was, it was interesting because it just felt kind of quite second nature and, and, and natural for me to when I played Elaine um, to the point where I started to overthink it. I was like, should I be doing more? Um, but actually, um, it was just really coincidental that she kind of just felt like a missing piece and she kind of just fell in. Um, so it was, yeah, it was an absolute whirlwind. My life really did change overnight, but I feel very lucky. Yeah, um, the audition process similarly for me was a bit of a whirlwind. Um, I was away from home uh, when I got an invitation to do a tape for a project that wasn't called Wheel of Time. It was something mysterious and mythical. And uh, I was in uh, Morocco, I was in the desert. And so I was running around asking friends for a tripod and we'll do it when the sun is out and this thing and that thing. And it felt all a bit kind of um, slapdash or something. And so I sent it off into the ether and I thought, good night and good luck to that. <laughs> and uh, But amazingly, I, I, I got a call uh, to, to, to come back and um, in a very strange, wonderful way, um, the place where I was standing when I got a phone call from my agent um, to say, I think, you know, you're going to go to Prague and meet um, the guys that are working on this project that is called The Wheel of Time. Um, I was standing um, in a spot that we ended up uh, filming in, in Morocco. Um, on season two and it's a, a large part of my character's journey um, th that uh, that scene, that location um, uh, pivots to. So there's a remarkable kind of cyclical uh, magic to, to that, that almost a year to the day I was back in that same spot in Morocco filming the pivotal, uh, the, 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 the pinnacle of my, my character's journey. So um, that's, yeah, I think there's something kind of magic about that. Everyone has a choice. And every choice has a consequence. I'm bigger than my body. We didn't defeat the Dark One. We set him free. No one should have that much power. Together we face the impossible. But now we're in our separate corners of the world. Him. That is the only thing that matters. You can't control him. You know you have something inside you. Yes. Something that calls for blood. I want to know how to control it. The last battle's coming. The whole world will be ours. If our friends are in trouble, why would they ever stay here? You have no conception of the power they need. You can't do this by yourself. There are many paths to walk through the night. It's not always the most powerful who write history. It's the ones who survive. I'm tired of being a spoke in the wheel. Boy, you are the water that turns the wheel itself. <laughs>